On the 1st of December 1988, the Antonov Design Bureau finally presented its plane. It had not flown yet, and many wondered if it ever would. The Mriya lifted off the snowbound runway and graced the skies over Kiev with a 74-minute maiden flight. That day, it set 106 world records for aviation. These were quite difficult times. These were the times before the collapse of the Council for Mutual Economic Assistance, SEB, and the USSR collapse. Yet although our firm was working like we are working now, everything we were doing was done on the basis of great enthusiasm. Upon seeing the AN-225, the first pilot was reported as doubting whether the plane could actually manage to lift off the ground. Oleksandr Galunenko is a test pilot, one of the people tasked with trying out new planes. He flew the AN-225 with the Buran piggyback all the way to Paris. That's why, back in 1989, when the program wasn't closed, we flew from Muriria in May 1989 to Baikonur, where we put Buran on it, and we conducted a series of tests with Buran. And then we flew with this Buran back here to Gostomel, and then we flew to Paris, Les Bourget, and we showed this tandem, Bria Buran. And before the Soviet Union collapsed, this system began to fail. The state financing was constantly decreasing, and we had to think how to go on. We had to find ways to earn money in order to build new planes and to continue our aviation work. And this is when this idea was conceived. For us to start to provide air transportation services. The AN-225 didn't just dazzle Paris, but was showcased in many countries during the tensions of the Soviet era. Before that, we exhibited our planes at various air shows in the world. In Paris, Le Bourget held every two years. Farnborough, we were in Singapore, we flew to the US. All that during the Soviet Union times, to show our planes. The decline of the Soviet Union was marked by the worst nuclear disaster the world had ever seen. The explosion of the second reactor in Chernobyl, close to the Ukrainian capital of Kiev. The radioactive fallout took many victims, and as the scope of the environmental catastrophe became clear, the population of the surrounding area was displaced. This was the AN-225's first humanitarian mission, just before the Soviet Union collapsed. Well, let's say in 1990 to 91, I had to transport cargoes. At that time, Ukrainian diaspora in America collected some medical equipment for the children who suffered the results of the Chernobyl disaster, which was needed. It was important for them to make it visible and they asked even the president, if I'm not mistaken, to send them not some Ruslan, but Mirya specifically. So I brought several such shipments from Newark and from Philadelphia. The collapse of the Soviet Union was an unexpected event, and many of the planes that were in the design pipeline would never be realized. The Antonov Design Bureau, however, would manage to keep this giant of the skies alive. The Soviet Union had plans to build several such planes. And there is a second plane. Yet it is difficult to say to which extent it is ready, maybe about 40%. Well, it was as it was. There were no funds available to complete construction of the second plane, and it remained unfinished. 
их должно быть создано несколько этих мрей. And the plan was to create several such mrejas. Then the Soviet Union collapsed, funding ceased, and we were not even able to complete the final flying test in order to receive the certificate. The Antonov Airlines factory near Kiev continued, but the AN-225 was sadly parked for storage. It would be mothballed for seven years before the Antonov Airlift Company managed to get it repaired and certified for commercial use. And only seven years later, funds were found, internal financial resources that enabled us to modernize Mriya for the commercial needs and complete these approximately 20 trial flights in order to obtain the certificate. And then it could transport cargos flying all over the world. That is why the experience of Antonov, both with regard to the use and maintenance, is great because it is about not only aerodynamics, but also the capacity, resource, reliability of the supporting system. And the Maria has all of it. In the year 2000, the plane went through a series of upgrades and repairs, and then again made its first public debut in May 2001 at the ceremony of the opening of the new Borispol Kiev airport. In June, Europe got its first look at the sleeping giant that had been modernized to take to the skies once again. It was displayed at the Le Bourget Air Show in France. September the 11th, 2001 would make aviation history in more than one way. In order to demonstrate its potential to the world, on the 11th of September 2001, we performed a record cargo lifting of 253 tons for 10,500 meters of height. Yet, since this event took place on the 11th of September 2001, another event that happened at that time overshadowed this record. The terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center in New York would forever overshadow the 124 world records broken by the AN-225 that day. It flew with four Ukrainian tanks, a total weight of 253 tons. With that heavy cargo, it reached a top speed of 763 kilometers per hour, but very few gave it much attention. The September the 11th attacks led to two massive wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, in which Antonov Airlines and AN-225 would fly missions for the US Army engineers and special forces into some of the most dangerous territory in the world. In one particularly dangerous mission, the AN-225 flew gas turbines into the heart of the fighting in Iraq to the Baiji power plant. Our planes are also often used for transportation of military equipment. All these operations are carried out in accordance with intergovernmental agreements when diplomatic permits are obtained as required. So we transport military equipment from one continent to another as well. Our planes were very often used during operations in Afghanistan, Iraq, and before that, in the Persian Gulf, during the Desert Storm, if you remember the 1991-92 war, the Desert Storm operation. Our planes were used to carry bulldozers and other equipment to put out burning oil wells in that war. 